how you used to talk to them and use the word, but fix without the word that said you gotta love them, you subject yourself to the word. Some of y'all are still in your relationship, but the word said love your wife, as Christ loved the church. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yo, let me, let me get back to this right here. If I, hadn't, if I didn't have the word, the word sustains me. When I'm discouraged, the word sustains me, I go to the promise. I know that he who promises faithful. I go to that word. So God gave the word as a sustainer of mankind. So anytime you feel like quitting, go get the word. Ah, I think I'm preaching too good for nobody to say that again. Say it again. The word will sustain you. They, I think David said that word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. He said, when I need to see real close and I can't see nothing, I got a lamp. When I need to see way down the road, I got a light. But I'm going to stay in the word because your word is giving me direction. Your word is giving me hope. Your word is giving me power. Your word is faith. Come up by hearing the word. Someone is all about the word. It's all about the word. Someone says it's all about the word. It's all about the word. So we don't understand God's relationship because he only is going to be faithful to his word. He's not going to be faithful to your gifts. He's not going to be faithful to your talents. He's not going to be faithful to your tears and your emotions. He's only going to be faithful to his word. Thank God. Someone said thank God for the word. That's why I tell people all the time, take my car, take my house, take everything else, but don't take the word. Because if I don't have the word, I don't have nothing else. I can get me another car, I can get me another house. I can get me another pastor, another on, church. So. But just don't take the word from me. Because I got oh, yeah, be oh, I don't want to sweat. Oh, shut up, my handy. I don't want to sweat this morning. So let's talk about the word. Are we here again? I have your attention. Yeah. We have to know, Daniel, the relationship between God and his word. God's not going to change his mind once he releases something. Uh -huh. Just because you go to hell after it's been released, don't mean he changed his mind. Uh -huh. yeah. All it means he tell you, you weren't ready for that. I just told you have it. I don't have time because I'm going to pray. Oh, y'all don't hear me right here. He said, I'm telling you it right now. That's what prophecy is all about. Prophecy is given to inform you of something. Yes. Prophecy is given to let you know I already did this. Yes. And that's what he talked about in Romans chapter 9. I'm off a message a little bit. When he said, now it wasn't when, when God told uh, 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 Rebecca, the, the, the older should still be younger. He said, God did it in advance so she could know that he is not unrighteous because all, the older are supposed to get the stuff. But that he do things in his own way. That all things are done according to his purpose, according to his election. Yes. So when God tells you something, he did that way in his word, he gave you a word of prophecy, he is not going to change that. Amen. Jacob, I don't care if you rob your brother, I don't care what you do, I don't care how many wives you have, how many girls you have, I made you Israel. Yes, God. Oh, shut I. Are you going to understand what I'm saying? When God released the word, that's his own integrity, his own authority. You can't really have faith unless you understand the integrity of God. You can't really have faith unless you understand God's position in his word. Yes. Are you all here with me? Yes. Now, can I bring it a little bit closer for us this morning? Understand that the new man, somebody's having a new creation. You've been a gentleman of long enough. You know this today. You've a new creation. The new man has been created by the word to live on the word and in the word. Let me say it again. The word is the substance of God given for the sustainment and fulfillment of the new man. You're not going to be able to do nothing outside of God's word. Can I take a sidebar? Because you're a spirit being. Yes. Yes. You have a body, I told you, you have a soul, you have, but you're a spirit being. Yes. When the Holy Spirit came in to dwell and live in you, he, you became a new creation, a son of God. And if God is a spirit, then if I'm a child, I gotta be spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. A dog can't have a man. Someone say amen. So amen. God is spirit, and I'm a child, then I have to be a spirit being. Amen. So I gotta understand that word is a spiritual substance. Ah, oh, you're number high. Somebody say amen to this. Words, that's why I keep telling you all the time, watch what you're saying. God has given you power on this earth. When you speak, you're speaking as God. That's why he wants you to speak what he speaks so you can get what he gave you. Yes. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Yes. That's why he wants you to speak exactly what he speaks. Faith cometh by hearing. The spirit of our faith is we believe, therefore I speak. So we speak because we have heard. But when we speak because we feel, now we create something that God has give us. Oh, that's good right there. Come on, Apostle. Am I preaching good yet? So we have to understand the, the relationship between you, as a spirit being, I have to eat words. See, I tell you all the time, be careful what you say to your children. And we have a lot of young babies in this house. Church, one just was born, one just ready to be born, ain't none of them here yet, but all of them is new members. Somebody say amen. 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 They'll be here soon, but they're both men. So somebody say amen. amen. So what's it now? But when you speak to these children, be careful what you're putting into their spirit. Because when they grow up and they get muscles, 
I'm going to get 38, 34, 36. What you put in your spirit was going to matter. That's true. That's true. Because what you're saying that is working on the spirit man. Yes. The real portion is being built by your words, not the calls you buy them. Amen. Exactly. Come on, so you can buy them the most expensive dress and tell them they're stupid. You're destroying them from within. Oh, help me. I'm preaching good here. Yep. I'm preaching so good here if you want to get this. Understand, the relationship that God has with his word is the same relationship he gave you his word. Behold, I give you power to turn up scoffers and serpents and all the power of the enemy. Whatsoever you say, that's what you should have. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. If you look at the relationship of your house, it's because of what you've been saying. Come on, yep. sir. Come on, Apostle. You can't treat... Oh, yo, let, me, let, me, let me get back. I know we're getting to the word. Can I tell you? If you look at your environment and your relationship, your marriage, your relationship with your children, is based on what you've been saying. Amen. Come on, sir. Come on. Because you're trying to treat them right, but you're saying the wrong things. Yeah. Wow. Boy, I'm preaching you good right now. You don't know you get it. You're trying to buy the right dress and buy the right shoes, but you're saying the wrong thing. You will never be nothing. you just like your daddy. you just like your mom. We start saying all these kind of crazy things, but while we're trying to buy them all the best things, I'm not going to be able to finish this message. Are you understand what I'm saying? Be careful, gentlemen, love, as the new creation is thinking. Be careful what you are saying out of your mouth. Come on, apostle. You have to understand that you and I have been created to live on words. We have been created to live by words. And I know it don't feel good all the time because all of the time we can say people can tell us how to act on our, our feelings and our thoughts. And we keep speaking based on what we think and how we feel and we keep creating negative things around us and we can't figure out why. I'm working with my wife big time on this young a testimony ministry, Justin. I told her last night, I don't want to hear that. Because if it's not something, I don't know, I haven't got to the place. Y'all walk with me. Well, I, I, only want, I want to say positive things and I want to hear positive things. I'm in the wrong church. I'm coming back. But I'm in a place, David, where I want to speak positive things and I want, I want to hear positive things. Doesn't matter what I see. I speak based on what's in this word. So if I'm not going to say something good about you, I'm not going to say nothing at all. And if you come to me and you're not going to say nothing good about people, shut up. I don't want to hear it. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Somebody say amen to that. That's why I'm glad y'all don't call me. They want to just call me because they know how the apostle is. I don't want to hear it. Because I want to have a positive environment around me. I want, like y'all feel what I'm saying? I want to be able to rest in my house. I want to be able to rest when I go to my bed. I don't have a bed to hear about what kind of shoes somebody wears. I want. Come on, pray so. for me. Come on, pastor. I always hear my prayer for me. I'm working. I know it's a struggle. But man was created by the word. To live on the word. I'm taking you somewhere. And by the word. We are as projects before God. Oh, I know y'all ain't be able to stand as I'm going with this. When God chose you before the foundations of the world and placed you in this holy place, you became a project. Are you going to walk in your destiny? Are you going to walk in your calling? Because in order for you to do that, it's going to be in the word. Or you can be in church dancing for 20 years and never apply a word. Have the biggest choir, have the best music, but never apply a word. Every one of us become a little project before God. The Bible says, oh, I can't get to my notes. The Bible says we are his showpiece. We are called according to his purpose. Remember, his purpose is this church. This thing that he set before himself and as an exhibit to himself. So every one of us who come to church, we have a destiny and a purpose. But now when we walk in that, that becomes his project. What he's going to do is give you, oh, I, I'm going to take a sidebar. As a believer, you are as an actor. Somebody say amen because I'm preaching really good here. As a believer, you are as an actor. Which means that, can I break that down for y'all? Please. Y'all make room for them to get in there. They say, thank God, God bless you. Good to see you this morning. Amen. Amen. Watch this now. I'm, I'm going to take a sidebar because I want y'all to see something. I want to take a sidebar here. When God called you, somebody say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. When you believe something because you don't really know it. That's just I know that. A lot of times we say, I believe that, and he call us believers. You know why he call us believers? Because there's a script written. I'm taking a sidebar, and y'all pray for me, because this is a nice study. I feel, ow, oh, I feel this coming. Watch this now. He wrote a script. Okay, let me put it this way. If anybody's familiar with movies, they write a script for a movie, but they write the ending first. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Yes, yes. They decide how the movie's gonna finish. So they 
know what they focus on. Then they go back over here and start choosing people and characters and putting things together to get to that finish. Come on, Apostle. But they're already determined who will die, who will live, who will be blessed, who will be rich at the end of the movie. But now they go back over here, knowing the ending before the beginning, and they start choosing people according to get to the ending. If they want a six foot eight person, they can't use you. They gotta come looking for me. Somebody say amen. Oh, you ain't saying that. Because they want to have the ending. Glory to God. I know you know what I'm saying. When they're making movies just and they start from the ending first. And then they're gonna start from the beginning. And then they choose actors. The actors are given a script. Now they have to act according to the script.